We'll give it one more minute here. All right, good afternoon, good morning, everyone. Hope everybody's doing well. My name is Joe Hooper. I'm the Vice President of the Electronic Access Control Group for Banner Solutions. Today, we're gonna to be presenting TORUS uh, Integrated Electronic Digital Key Management System. And uh, I just wanted to quickly introduce you to um, Banner Solutions, if I can have you go to the next slide. And Banner Solutions, uh, is there a slide before this, Lucas? After this. There we go. Um, for those of you who may not know who we are, Banner Solutions is one of the largest um, door hardware and access control distributors out there um, today. Through a series of acquisitions, we've become a, a large $250 million distribution arm with, uh, with uh, more than 12 distribution centers across the United States. We have a deep and wide inventory of both mechanical and electromechanical products, including access control products and software. Um, we're going to be showing you one of the products that we recently began carrying here today. Um, we have a, a, a large network. Uh, I think one of the things that people have found us to be uh, very responsible when it comes to being able to ship, we can ship uh, within a day uh, to about 95% of the U.S. population. And one thing that makes us different is our experts. Um, if you've not met our team, we have a large team of industry-leading experts who have a uh, very deep knowledge of both door hardware and electronics. Um, and that's what really brings the value for Banner Solutions to the table for most of our customers is that if they have a question regarding a lock or a particular solution they're trying to resolve, uh, we have the team that can actually really address it. And for the electronics group, if I can go to the next slide, you could reach our team. Uh, well, one of two ways you could reach our team, you can actually call us at uh, 1-888-509-1226. Or the best way to do that is just send us an email at EAC at bannersolutions.com. Our team will respond. Um, there's a number of people below this slide. If this goes out, um, you'll see Keith Lather, Jeff Newell, Brian Boggs, and Brenton Webb are really on our quotes and design team. Um, these guys are really my experts when it comes to being able to put the parts and pieces together for any solution you're looking for. With that, let me turn this over to Lucas Edmonds, who is the uh, uh, director of the U.S. Sales for Taurus, and I'll let him introduce you, you to the to our solution. Thanks, Joe. I am going to take the easy way out and let a short video do the introduction for me. Hi, Mason here. I'm on the way to pick up the key from you and uh, heading out to the site. Yeah, I was expecting you half an hour ago. I'm stuck in traffic. I'll be at least another 30 minutes. This is how it used to be. Wasting hours every day waiting for contractors and visitors, handing out keys, losing keys, spending money replacing keys and locks. Then we found a better way. Taurus is a key management system that helped us take control of all of our keys so we can efficiently and securely manage our people, buildings, and the assets within them. Taurus improved our key management overnight and completely modernized our operations. I knew that we were spending a lot of money cutting keys and replacing locks, but I've been blown away by how much time we have saved for so many people. It paid for itself in six months, and it works in any industry. Let me show you how. Taurus has delivered us best practice key management, reducing unnecessary copies of keys and ensuring that they are secured and monitored when not in use. Our keys are always accounted for. They must be returned and should never leave a site. Because Taurus cabinets are securely connected to the software, we can manage all of our sites remotely and eliminate travel time to pick up keys at a central location. With Taurus, access to each key is tightly controlled and can be updated or removed in real time. Now I am in complete control. Taurus gives me touch-free remote management of our keys. It even sends credentials directly to the phones of new staff and contractors. There are three ways this works for you. First, for a company like ours with a lot of keys and sites, Taurus reduces staff downtime spent dealing with keys, and that works out to be a surprising amount of money every single year. Not to mention, no more lost keys or urgent lock replacements. Second, this means our critical assets are more secure and our facilities safer, less risk, and detailed tracking keeps the compliance team happy. Third, the solution is fully scalable. 
Because it's managed securely in the cloud, you can control unlimited sites and get super granular in terms of controlling access. Implementing Taurus is quick and easy. All you need is a wall. You don't need to get new keys made. All your existing keys can be secured to the cabinet and your staff can even use their existing access cards to open the cabinet. You don't even need new power outlets because the cabinets can run on POE. Your IT team will see the benefit of Taurus as a cloud solution. Pay only for what you use and no unnecessary investment in infrastructure. Taurus is a fully integrated system with a single sign-on or SSO. The IoT stack is hosted by Microsoft Azure, employing the very best security and encryption standards. So you see how this works for you? It's the best key management practice available. More secure, more efficient, and saves you a lot of time and money. Very good. So we want to talk today about keys. Keys are annoying. They're everywhere. They're, they're costly. They can be risky, um, but they are still very important. And although we're probably seeing a downward trend in the quantity of keys as they get replaced by things like access control, um, they're absolutely not going anywhere. There, there are certain applications where access control cannot touch. If we're talking padlocks, storage cages, vehicles, forklifts, um, and sometimes it doesn't make sense um, for cost reasons or, or, or others. So keys are around. They can cost organizations a lot of money in terms of time, but also in terms of rekeying. Um, if they get in the wrong hands, there's a lot of risk, can be theft, can be loss of stock. So there are certain things that organizations can do to have best practice key management. The first of them is to reduce the total copy of keys. Particularly for masters or grandmaster keys, the more copies there are out there, the more risk. You multiply the risk every time you have a new copy of that key. So we wanna reduce the copies. We want the keys to never leave site so that they get returned to a location and they stay on site all the time. They don't go home with people. They don't get lost in people's vehicles or go into people's pockets. It's not enough to say that only forklift drivers are able to access the forklift keys. There has to be a way to actually apply that in a very real sense to make sure that the, the keys, the people who are not supposed to have the keys um, aren't able to access them. And of course, transparency and accountability. I want to know who was using that forklift key last Thursday with absolute certainty. And if something does go wrong, um, if the key goes into, into the wrong hands, um, or if there are any sort of violations, we need to know about it instantly and we need to be able to respond to it instantly. And I've added this last point here, the elimination of human error, particularly remote management. We wanna remove humans from the, from the equation, particularly in simple tasks, repetitive, the ones that humans don't wanna do um, and replace them with technology. Technology can be much more efficient. We can remove that human error and flexible work conditions um, are increasing at the moment. So we want to enable remote management of sites. Can you manage your keys from anywhere in the world, even if you're not physically on site? So we're very excited to introduce our latest product. This is the fifth generation of key cabinets that we have designed as a company. We're originally from Australia. We're very excited to bring Taurus to the market out here, and we're very excited to be partnering with Banner in order to do so. The cabinet goes on the wall. It secures all of the organization's keys and it allows users to get access only to their keys by authenticating. <clears throat> so that can be with a user ID and a pin on the screen, or it can be um, by, by presenting their existing access card. We can use any type of reader with a weakened output or we're already compatible with OSDP. The door of the cabinet will open and I will only be able to take the keys that I'm allowed to have. It simply will not let me remove keys that the administrator has not determined that I'm allowed to have. We can go a step further with a lot of this too. The first feature I want to talk about is multi-custody. That is where more than one person needs to be present to get the key out of the cabinet. In this case, when I open the door, the key will be orange or amber instead of green, and I will need to get my supervisor to come here to countersign that key for me. We see this a lot in hospitals with drug cabinets where two nurses need to be present to get a key out. 
We can arrange keys into groups and we can limit the quantity each user can take from a group. This was designed for vehicles in mind. I can't drive two cars at once. So when I take one key out of this particular group, it will not let me take another one. But it doesn't affect what other keys I can take. So I can take one vehicle and two office keys and one from something else and one from something else. It only affects the quantity within that group. So we've got a lot of flexibility within the cabinet. One of the cornerstones of this product is having a key that is overdue. That is a key that's out of the cabinet that is supposed to be back in the cabinet. There are two ways to trigger this particular alarm. One is to put a key timer on the key. Every key in the box can have a different length of time. And if it's not back in the box without that, it triggers this overdue key status. The second way of doing it is a shift. So this isn't a length of time, but a window of opportunity. For example, nine to five. So I'm only able to get these keys within that window. And if they're not returned by the end of that window, it's gonna trigger this overdue alarm state. By default, all of the keys in the cabinet must be returned by the same user that took them. And of course, there's an override. We have a particular role called a cabinet supervisor. And so the supervisor of that cabinet will be able to override that and return other people's keys. Can I encourage people to, if you've got any questions, please do interrupt me. Um, I can only see my screen, but if, if you want to enter some things in the chat uh, or raise your hand, uh, hopefully Joe or Travis can help me out and let me know if there are any questions. Has anyone typed anything in yet? Lucas, uh, we did have one question in regard to whether the solutions are out in the market place today and in, in what makes Taurus different from uh, the competitors? Yeah, absolutely. We'll get right into it then. Um, so there's a lot of things that make Taurus, Taurus different. Um, what I've sort of explained already in the sort of access control for the keys, um, and of course, we're taking audit trails for every action, that's pretty common out in the, out in the marketplace. The things that are different about Taurus is that we have used the latest technology to bring something out to the market that actually removes a lot of burden from the administrators. So we are the highest security key management system on the market with the lowest burden of administration. I would say our previous product and everything else in the market um, replaces one problem with another. So they may give organizations control of the keys but they've replaced it with this problem of who manages it. The technology is complicated. Integrating it is difficult. Maintaining the servers and the SQL, the database, um, doing the different readers, um, creating updates and patches, and the reliability of the electronics, all of that can be really, really problematic. Um, so they may have control of their keys, but now they've got this huge burden in managing this old fashioned kind of system. With Taurus, the first thing we wanted to do was make it effortless to install. And this really sets us apart to others. It goes on the wall like a TV. It's got a fantastic mechanical design. It's very, very, very simple. There's great cable management built in. Um, and because there's no software to install, this is a, a completely hosted package. All you have to do is enter a single code onto the cabinet. It connects, everything's great, and it works straight away. So imagine going for an installation of a key management product and ours takes 20 to 50 percent of the time of someone else's there's a lot of efficiency to be gained there this product is an iot solution and so it can communicate with literally thousands and thousands of devices around the world in different time zones at high speed and it's bringing all of this information together into a central dashboard and allowing someone to manage an entire country or entire world's worth of worth of cabinets from one location and they can access this software from a browser from anywhere in the world. We have integrated email and SMS alerts and this definitely sets us apart too. We do not require the customer to link our software with their Outlook server. We don't require a modem or a, an email to SMS gateway we're sending the notifications directly from our platform. So if someone hasn't returned a key on time, the system will SMS them 
and their boss maybe, depending on how you configure it, it will SMS them instantly directly from the platform. Security is something that really sets us apart. Um, security of the box, definitely. It's very robust. They're quite heavy, actually. Um, my poor sales reps have to carry them around with them. I think our smallest one is about 77 pounds, but they're incredibly heavy, very strong, very robust. Um, there's a dual point locking system on the door and the locking mechanism um, is hidden behind two 90 degree turns. So it's very, very secure. But of course, we want to talk about cybersecurity. So we use best practice identity management, best practice encryption at rest and in transit between the devices and the, and the software. So Lucas, we've got a couple of questions here for you. Does, Please, the go buffer, for it. does the buffer store everything locally if it can't reach the cloud and how long can it do this uh, is the first question. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like Chris uh, responded up to 100K in transactions. Uh, oh, 100,000. Yeah, so the, the, the cabinet will absolutely, uh, everything's stored locally. Um, so there's a local replication of the data on the actual cabinet. So if it loses connection, um, it will keep operating perfectly. It can store, I think it's about 100,000 100, transactions. Um, so it will just keep storing them, keep storing them. That's months and months worth, worth of transactions in our experience. Um, it will just keep storing them. And then the minute the connection is made again, it will do all of that in the background um, and, and just repopulate its database. Perfect. And for those who uh, didn't see it as well, there was a question regards to the backlight, whether or not that comes with the panel. And I did not set this one up for you. So I'm just going on record. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be fielding questions about this light forever. Um, so the light on the inside of the panel, we did, well, we were planning to do as part of the design. Um, and most of our partners said it's probably not a good idea to have this giant shining neon light advertising the fact that there are very important keys in this box. So we have a couple of photos with the bright blue light in it that we use for marketing because um, it's important to show that there are keys on the inside. Otherwise, it just looks like a black box. Uh, the light does not come. I'm going to get hate mail for this. The light does not come with the cabinet, although we do have some customers that have purchased some, some things from Amazon so they can illuminate the inside. That's an, that's an aftermarket thing. And I know Joe is particularly keen on the light. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that is correct. Uh, and then uh, I think that's it. Uh, and uh, somebody just wanted to clarify, this is PoE. Um, and is there specific requirements for the PoE? Yeah, really good question. I, I'm going to talk about PoE a lot because it's one of the fav my favorite things that we've done with this. Um, it's base level PoE and it's all sizes of cabinet. Um, it so yeah, that's, that's it. Base level PoE, all sizes of cabinet can be run completely, do not need to run any power to the cabinets. Um, that's a really big point that sets us, sets us apart. Running a, you know, a power outlet to, to every cabinet can cost um, for a business two and a half, three thousand dollars $3,000 at every location. So we're instantly, instantly removing that burden from them. So it's a lower, lower cost of total ownership for the product and easier to install, easier to deploy because we don't have that power requirement. Um, a lot of work went into getting that, uh, so I'm very proud of it. I won't shut up about it. Okay, uh, and then the next question is, uh, is there any direct integrations uh, with existing security platforms? So I know that'll be coming up, so uh, we'll table that for the time being, because I know yeah. that'll be uh, in the rest of the presentation. So yeah. that's it for now. Okay, very good. Uh, please do keep interrupting. Um, Joe, just let me know if, if there are some questions. I'd rather this be a bit more interactive. Um, so let the questions keep coming. I appreciate it. Uh, what am I up to? Uniquely scalable. So one of the things, again, that sets us apart is um, we can segment out administrator responsibilities. So if you've got a factory in California and one in Texas, uh, you can make it so that the California administrator cannot see or interfere or do anything with the Texas cabinets. Um, and that can happen within, within one location too, between departments. So we've got a hospital um, they use us in mental health, pharmacy, facilities, and security, but they don't want each department being able to change the access rules and the users and everything for, for their cabinets. So they've segmented it, and the administrator, when they log in, they can only see their cabinets. And my last point, a solution for the future. So this is an investment. It's definitely future-proof. We've already got OSDP um, on the board, and that's just an emerging technology for, for readers. Um, we can do over-the-air updates for the cabinets. So they're going to continually evolve in terms of features. 
We also have an agile development program. We're running two sprints every month. So we're constantly um, able to respond to customer feedback, um, feature requests, bug fixes, and I'm gonna to get to it, new integrations. So when it comes to installation, this is the bracket I was talking about. Uh, POE is mentioned there again. Um, so the bracket goes on the wall, the cabinet hangs on the bracket. The, the design of the box makes this incredibly easy. It's probably, it's probably a 20 or 30 minute job to get it hung. So it's, it's very, very, very quick. The only thing I will say is due to the security and robustness of the construction, they are heavy, uh, particularly for the big ones, we recommend having two people to lift them. Um, but the actual in installation, very, very, very simple. No need for a power outlet. Um, and no need to program a static IP address. So again, we're removing that burden from installation and from the customers. So we use DHCP so they can get the IP address dynamically from, from the server. We also have a built-in 4G modem so we can run on LAN or customer can put a SIM card in and have a true remote system. And once it's powered up, all you need to do is enter a provisioning key. It automatically connects with the software. So we don't need to talk to IT. We don't need to spin up a new server. We don't need a dedicated SQL instance and a database administrator on site to help all that. Again, we're removing a lot of this burden and we've got single sign on as well. So we're removing the burden from the IT teams in order to install it, but also manage this in the long term. Here is a look at our software. And without even running a report, we're bringing in all of this information in real time and displaying it in a really user-friendly way on the dashboard. So instantly we can see here, I've got keys in, keys out and keys overdue. And this will automatically be filtered based on my role. So again, if I'm just that California location, it will only show me the results for, for the site that I'm allowed to see. We're not just showing that, we're also doing trends and analytics. This is sample data, so you can see we're not doing particularly well, but it's saying on time returns of 50%. So 50% of the time my users are getting their keys back in the cabinet. That is terrible. We would love to see that closer to 90% and constantly improving. So just by looking at the dashboard, I can see how often people are returning them on time. I can also see that there's been a negative change, so it's gone down 30% over the last week. So not only is it bad, but we're getting worse. So we would want the customers to have the opposite of this. If I click on it, we're displaying everything um, in, in a way that's easy to digest. So as graphically as possible. So rather than just exporting an Excel table and forcing the customer to go through a thousand rows just to get the piece of information they need, we're trying to make it more user-friendly so the information is there at their fingertips. And if we click here on the overdue keys, it's going to list all of the keys that are overdue. And I love this feature here as well. It actually provides a little graph of how overdue the key is. So we're not forcing you to look through rows and rows in a report and then do the calculations in your head. Okay, it's now 6 p.m. and it was due back at 3.30. It will tell you how overdue it is because that is, it's an opportunity to respond. You're gonna respond differently to a key that's a minute overdue than a key <laughs> in this case, sample data again, I apologize, but this key is 15 days and, and 10 hours overdue, which is the exact opposite of what we're trying to achieve with this product. So that's all of the information coming in on the dashboard, but if you're an administrator in the software, you also have full control of the information going out. So you can control all of the access, all of the users. All you need to do is set up a user in the system, decide what keys they're supposed to have access to. And when they log into the cabinet, only those keys are gonna unlock for them. There are a couple of things that separate us from, from the other products in the market too. And that is things that make the administrator's life easier. So when I create a new user, the system automatically texts them their, their credentials. So I don't need to send a separate email or, or, or make a phone call and say, hey, when you start work on Monday, um, use this pin, because of course saying a pin out loud uh, over the phone isn't very secure. So the system is going to text it to them automatically so that when they go to the cabinet, only those keys are gonna light up. Now, if the administrator deems that this is appropriate, so again, the administrator is in full control, there is actually functionality to allow that user to enroll their own card. 
So this means I never have to see that user. Uh, I'm on the East Coast. I can set up a new contractor to come to work on the West Coast. I never have to meet them in person. They can enroll their own card at the cabinet and get access to only the keys that I've, I've, I've allowed them to have. Now let's say it's two o'clock in the morning. This particular user is at the cabinet. Um, they're doing some emergency work, but they forgot their pin. In every other system, they would have to make a very awkward phone call to their administrator, two o'clock in the morning, I'm so sorry, I forgot my pin, can you reset it for me? Well, our system allows them to do that automatically from the cabinet. Now, let's say this particular user is getting a promotion. So as of Monday next week, they're starting a new role and need access to new keys. So I jump in as the administrator and I make that change for them. Now, instead of having to make a phone call or tell them separately, the system automatically detects the change and it automatically puts together an email for this user and says, your access has changed. You now have access to these new keys and here is the administrator's name who made that change for you. So if I do have any questions, I can always give them a call back. So this is all about just keeping people in the know. You've got that knowledge at your fingertips. There are gonna be no surprises when this user goes to the cabinet and all of the keys light up this time because they're gonna know that that access has been changed. We're collecting over 100, I think it's 153 off the top of my head, events. So anytime someone opens a door, takes a key, returns a key, all of those sorts of things. If the power goes out, if the battery's low, um, all of these are events and we're, and we're collecting them. We're also collecting events in the software. So if I log in and give my best friend access to a key they're not supposed to have, there's a record of that in the software. All of those events come through on the dashboard and you can drill down and see all of the reports. But we recognize not everyone's lucky enough to have someone sitting at you know, a computer in a control room monitoring all of this 24 seven. So we have an incredibly advanced rule engine within the software. Customers can set all of their own notifications via email or via SMS directly out of the system based on any of those events. And let's say the, a key hasn't been returned on time and 30 minutes have gone by and it still hasn't been returned. We can even run escalations out, out of the software as well. So this is all about keeping the right information in the right hands. If you know about it, the chances are you're gonna get that key back instantly. Whereas if customers are using, you know, an old fashioned kind of sign out sheet, chances are you don't know that key hasn't been returned, you know, maybe for a week or a month or the next time someone needs to use it. So it's very powerful making sure that people, people know straight away. And that includes the user too. So sending a text to the user saying your key is overdue is a great way to get them to return it to the cabinet. We're getting technical here. Um, lots of acronyms. I might pause for a second, Joe. Have there been any more questions? No more questions at this point. Okay. So a lot of acronyms here. I think the important take home points are that we're using best practice identity management. Everything is encrypted. Um, we are more than more than willing, in fact, eager to, to go through any sort of customer's security or risk assessment process. We've done it with a couple of our customers. We always pass with flying colors. This is something that really, really sets us apart. Um, our business in Australia, we've been doing key management and only key management products for the last 20 years. And we started um, with products that were dedicated solely to the Australian military and, and high security applications in government. So security is our backbone. We've implemented this product um, with all sort of best practice um, identity management and encryption. Um, so even the most rigorous risk assessments that we've gone through, the customer's always been incredibly happy with the way we've done the, the infrastructure and the architecture in the back end. One other thing, if, you're, if an administrator is at the software, um, we do a one-time pin. So we can do multi-factor authentication, not only on the cabinet, um, so user ID and pin or a card swipe and pin, but within the software as well. So it'll be email and password plus a one-time code sent to your phone. We are hosted using Microsoft Azure, which means we inherit all of their security features. Um, Microsoft Azure, they've got multi-layered security on all of their data centers, including operational security, physical security, and cybersecurity. 
They have the largest spend. It's a billion dollars a year on cybersecurity of any other company. There's a lot of information. I think the important things there are, it's encrypted at rest, encrypted at rest, and the information is encrypted at transit. Mm -hmm. I mentioned this earlier, but the, the ability for us to segment out different administrators within, within the software, I think is really, really important. A lot of our customers do have multiple departments or multiple sites, and they want that flexibility around who can control each one. So it is possible to create um, a, a site administrator, or a, we call it a cabinet level administrator. So you can select exactly which cabinets each particular administrator can control. And that will affect the reporting they get, the access, the access groups they're allowed to manage, um, the alarms and notifications they get, uh, and their dashboards. So they can only control these cabinets. And another thing that's unique to us is we can support multiple integrations within the one software account. So if you're using Linnell at your site in California and Genetech in Texas, we can integrate with both of them at once. Um, and allow them both within the one software account. So let's skip ahead to integrations. Integrations are really important. Um, we love building integrations with access control systems, and we've got an ongoing system that not only builds new ones, but also keeps all of our existing ones up to date. I think the fact that we are a hosted platform and the fact that the integrations are built into the system is such a huge advantage um, let's say Linnell does an update for all the other products, they would then need to install another patch, they would need to do an upgrade of their system. Um, and it couldn't be a really complicated installation um, on different servers with different firewalls, you know, throughout the site on all of their different pieces of infrastructure. With us, if Linnell does an update, we respond to it and we deploy it um, automatically through the software. So it's absolutely seamless to the end user. All of our integrations are kept up to date we manage that entire program. And if there's an integration you don't see, um, we can build a new one in about a month. So we can be incredibly responsive with that too. Every product's a little bit different, but in general, this would be how the integrations work. So we've got the third party system there on the left. Um, let's say Genetech, for example, it already has a database of users, um, their credentials, and various groupings, so access levels or access groups. What we do is we pull that information in automatically. So there's no risk of, um, or this is, there's no burden of duplicate data entry. Um, there's no human error where things can go wrong. It's a copy paste directly, and we keep it in sync in real time. So in this example, Sam Harris, who is a forklift driver, he can go up to the cabinet, we haven't had to enter his information again. We've sucked it in directly from Genetech. Sam can log into the cabinet and he'll only be able to take the forklift keys. When he does take a forklift key, we take a record of that transaction. That's, that's pivotal to what we do, but we also can send it directly back to the access control system. So you can view all of the reports from directly from one platform. I'll go back here and show the, the systems that we do integrate with. Do we have any questions on integrations? Nothing at this point, but uh, the question for you is Linnell, does that also include the S2 platform as well? Oh, good question. Um, so my understanding is that they are different softwares. And so it would take uh, a, a new development effort from us to do S2. Uh, it, is, it is on our roadmap. Um, so we will absolutely do it. It's simply a matter of priority. Um, our goal is to integrate with absolutely everything. And so we'll just get through the month by month. Um, if there's a need for it, it's simply a matter, you know, if there's a customer project that needs it straight away, we'll just bump it up to the top of the list. It's, it's very, very simple for us. Um, so Linnell for now, uh, S2 soon. Um, let me know if the demand's out there and we'll get it done for you. Uh, uh, any discussion on Honeywell? Somebody's asking on, on that on the Honeywell platform? Yeah, good question. Um, Honeywell is a little different in that they want to write the integration themselves. And so I know we are somewhat through the process of getting an integration written with Honeywell EBI. We have a hospital here in the United States and a big customer for us in Australia um, that, that's kind of pushing the demand for that one. 
So that's in progress. We have a little less control because Honeywell wants to do the work themselves, um, but it's it's on its way. Is it the EBI um, platform that's being requested? Uh, um, ProWatch. ProWatch, okay. Um, and, and then Honeywell uh, uh, S-I-N-E in Winpack. Abraham, uh, so you want... Yes, so, so yeah. Honey, Honeywell Sign, that's a really good one. So this was an Australian product that Honeywell purchased. Um, we have a fantastic integration with Sign. It's a, a visitor or contractor management system. And it's very, very unique in that it allows on-demand um, key assignments. So it's a, it's a Sign is a kiosk at the kind of entrance to a building. And you, you log in and you have to tell it who you are. Perhaps you're a contractor. It, it searches for various licenses and, and permissions within that. Um, and with our system, you can request a key from that platform. It automatically emails a group of administrators who are predetermined and on demand, they can click accept or reject within the email. So in almost real time, um, we can do on demand uh, key access for people logging in through sign. Um, and because we, can, because we can do multiple integrations with one account, so we, we have an application in Australia that's got about 20 sign accounts for 20 different buildings, but they can all come through onto the one Taurus account. Um, and it just sits there in the background and allows people to log in through that kiosk. Perfect. Uh, next, next week, there's a Honeywell event in Phoenix where they'll be showing off um, the, the integration with the sign platform. Perfect. I think that's it for questions so far. Very good. So in terms of key management, there are a lot of benefits for customers um, just in automating these little processes, signing keys in and out, you know, reducing the number of copies, reducing the number of times that keys go missing. If you can tighten those little things up within an organization, there's a lot of savings to be made. One is on the efficiency side and one is on the security side. We've got a, a customer, a small customer in Australia. It was a hotel with just two cabinets. So they spent $30,000 to have two cabinets fully installed and they save 20 minutes per shift and they do three shifts a day. It's just a single site, single hotel and they've got 100 personnel. They save just in those, those little increases in, in efficiency with labour, they save $102,000 per year. And these are their figures that they have provided to us. So there's an enormous amount of savings just by tightening up signing keys in and out, just by increasing productivity. So instead of going to a desk and waiting 10 minutes and asking for a key and then getting to work and maybe even traveling across campus to get to where you need to work, um, by removing all of that burden, you can save a lot of money in efficiency. I'd also like to talk about our model a little bit here in the United States and in Australia too, actually. So we have a dedicated channel model, um, which means we are only going through distribution uh, and, and resellers. We ourselves will not go direct to end, to end user. We are not competing against anyone here um, as Taurus. We are here simply to nurture and support the channel. There are good opportunities for revenue um, with our security integrator partners. So of course there's healthy margin on the cabinet. There's revenue with installation. Um, and I've touched on the fact that it probably takes half the time of, of any other product. So you can charge the same amount for installation. And if ours is easier, if it's more efficient um, and you know, it takes half the time, then, then it's better for you as well. A lot of our security integrator partners, um, they do bigger projects, right? So they're doing the CCTV and access control and they're installing a big site. They then wrap the cabinets up in the existing um, ongoing maintenance um, contract that they may have. Um, and the cabinets are very, very low maintenance. Um, so it gives you something else to add to the contract, um, but they can be managed remotely and they're incredibly reliable. As part of our lab testing that we did for FCC um, to get the uh, electronics certified, they rate your product based on a hierarchy. And so they throw electromagnetic um, interference at it. They throw power surges at it and, and see how the product is, is going to perform. The top level is that no human intervention is required. 
and that the product doesn't even restart itself. And that's what we achieved. So even under all of these, these conditions that they throw at the cabinet, the screen didn't even flicker, the cabinet didn't restart, and no human intervention was required. That's a big difference from some of these other products where if there's a power surge or something goes down with a network or you need to resync or there's a power outage um, and someone physically needs to go there, even if they just need to go there to restart it. Um, that's a huge burden that we've eliminated again um, with the advanced technology of, of this particular product. We also have some of the recurring revenue available to our security integrator partners as well, um, which is really great. It, it makes you a little more sticky with your customers um, and, and it's a good benefit, you know, incentivizes you to keep that relationship ongoing. Um, and the option there is if you want to get involved in billing, you can, or we can do it for you and give you a rebate. Um, I say that because we see, we see both of those out in the field. Um, sometimes the billing with the administrative overhead, uh, is something that our partners don't want to get involved in, we'll handle it. Um, other times they do want that billing relationship with the customer, so we can support that as well. I probably should have mentioned this up front. The cabinet comes in in four sizes. I think most of the photos I've showed um, were of the 50. Here is a photo of, here's the 15. So this is the little one. It is um, taller and skinnier, I guess. So the right hand panel is the same on the 15, the 25 and the 50. That helps us with manufacturing, but it also helps with, uh, with the parts and the components. Uh, and it means that channel is exactly the same. It's, it's a modular um, similar component on, on all of our, on well, the smallest three sizes. So you can see here the 15, the 25 and the 50, they're all the same height. The 100, um, it's big, it's very big, very, very heavy, but we had to make it, make it larger on, on both sides. The control unit is the same. So the control unit is the same part, same size. They're all exactly the same that goes into each of the, each of the cabinets. Uh, again, that helps with um, you know, managing parts, um, but also you know, managing customers and, and having spares if that, if that needs to be the case. I'm getting close to the end. Do we have any questions? Uh, none yet so far. All right, excellent. So I will just summarize, um, we were asked up front, you know, what else is out there in the market and, and, and how do we compare? So I'll come back and summarize some of the things that I've spoken about. Number one, we are the first true cloud hosted. Um, I think there are some other products out there that call themselves cloud hosted, but cloud can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Um, simply putting your software on someone else's computer and calling it cloud, uh, and then making someone you know, connect to a VPN to, to manage it. That is not truly cloud. Um, we use Microsoft Azure. They are, the, they are considered to be the, the most secure. Um, you know, even the, the federal government in Australia um, and even Department of Defense uses Microsoft Azure here in the, in the United States. So we use Azure, we're completely scalable. We're an IoT solution. We've got built-in LAN and 4G um, and we can, we can support thousands of cabinets, tens of thousands, unlimited amount of cabinets communicating in high speeds back to this software, back to this software platform. So there are some products out there that call themselves cloud when they're not, they call themselves web-based when they're not, when maybe they're web-based, but they still require a lot of on-site infrastructure. So if we're thinking about a rollout of multiple sites, some of these big companies that have you know, factories and retail and multiple sites across the country, it's a huge burden to expect them to spin up multiple servers at, at each of the different sites to manage these cabinets. Um, we don't have that. So when I say true cloud, we are the first true cloud implementation of an of a advanced enterprise level key management system. Our integrations are native. <clears throat> There's a drop down menu within the software, select the integration, it will prompt you for the next couple of steps. It's very, very easy to set up. We don't require um, something that's, that, that requires ongoing, ongoing management. So we keep it up to date at all times. Also, we've got single sign-on using Azure AD. So customers can get their administrators to log into the software using their existing Windows passwords. So that's another burden removed from IT on managing people's passwords. Um, one of our hospital customers, their CTO has told us that they're not allowed to bring on any more products 
that don't have single sign-on because they have thousands of different software solutions, right? And if each of them have got their own database and their own SQL and people forget their passwords, IT has to manage that and it's a huge problem. So there's definitely going to be an increased demand for single sign-on um, in, the, in the future. There's an ongoing trend for that. We're future-proof. OSDP is already included on our board um, and we also send credentials remotely to someone's phone. So that, that, that really makes us unique and future-proof. The mechanical design of the actual box. So I spoke about the robustness, the locking mechanisms, you know, the, the door is incredibly robust. Um, the electrical certifications, I spoke about how reliable the product is. And I'll mention it again, because I love it, POE. Um, this, is, this is huge. It's an enormous effort of, of electrical engineering in order to get that. It's base level POE which means we completely remove the need for, um, for a power outlet. Um, we can run off AC power as well, I should, I should probably add. Um, so there is uh, a transformer inbuilt into the, into the system. So you can plug it in anywhere from 110 to 240. Um, that, 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 that's available as well. But for customers that don't want to bring a new power outlet into play, um, POE is available. We have a system of continual improvement and that really sets us apart. We've got an agile software development system, which means we're doing ongoing sprints every month, actually two every month. So if we need to bump uh, a different integration up to the top of the priority list, it's not gonna throw everything else out. We can be incredibly responsive. Um, we can get to that straight away if the customer demand is there. Plus we can send over the air updates to the cabinets which means the cabinet, the firmware and, and the features on the cabinet are going to continually evolve as well. So this is an investment for the future for our customers. And that really sets us apart from anything else that's going on in the market. But of course, the segmented administrators, I think that's a fantastic feature and the advanced notifications. So over 150 events and we can trigger all sorts of different uh, emails, SMS. Um, there are even output relays on each of the cabinets that we can trigger. So you might want to trigger a relay to turn on an external camera, um, or you might want to, to trigger a relay to go back to an external alarm panel. Um, so they're available directly from the cabinet as well. There are two inbuilt in relays on each cabinet, um, but we have a little board that we can sell as well that expands that up to eight. So it, it's in a, board, a board with an additional six output relays on it. Hey, Lucas, we've got a couple questions here for you. Um, the first one yeah. is, um, is this certified for clean rooms, uh, Class C, uh, which means able to resist uh, clean room sanitation? That is a really good question. I don't, uh, well, I mean, we haven't gone through that process, but let me, let me write it down and see what we can do. That's really interesting. Um, I'll, I'll need to do some research. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, that came from Ed Orr. Awesome, thank you. And then uh, he also had a question in regards to uh, migration path from uh, Key Secure to uh, Taurus. Uh, is there a path in what's the easiest way to trans transfer uh, data from one system to another? Yeah, so we can do the data transfer for you. Um, unfortunately, the two products, um, so for those of you who don't know, Key Secure is the software of our, of our previous product. Um, it was an on-premise uh, installation. The cabinets were called Secure It. Um, we still sell them, they're, 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 they're a great product, um, but the technology is so different. So the previous one was an on-premise SQL database with locally installed software. Um, and then the new one, of course, is, is, is Microsoft Azure. When we were developing it, we, we tried to have, you know, like a physical upgrade module so we could kind of convert one to the other and have a really smooth pathway. What ended up happening is we would we would have sacrificed the, the quality and the features of Taurus in order to make it backwards compatible. So we wanted Taurus to be the best that it possibly could be. The drawback is that it's not backwards compatible with Secure It. What we can do um, is do it on a case by case basis. If there's a Secure It customer out there and they've got all the cabinets that we want to transition to Taurus, perhaps we can come up with a commercial arrangement that makes that a lot easier for them. In terms of a data migration, we can absolutely do that. So we can get the reports out of Secure It and rebuild that into, into Taurus. That's something that we have to do, but we'll do that um, at no cost um, in the back end for you. 
Perfect. And I think uh, Ed also had an additional question that whether or not the groups and uh, customer fields are the same uh, between the two systems. Um, the between the two systems. So the. So uh, as, I, I'm assuming if you export the data, he's looking to be able to use the same access groups, identify the same access groups and levels uh, within that data. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So Taurus has more flexibility. So we would absolutely be able to replicate the same things from Securit, um, but we can do more with Taurus. So we can definitely replicate this. <laughs> Hello, puppy. We can definitely replicate the same, this, this, the same structure, the same access. Um, all of that's going to be available with, with Taurus, plus a bunch of other things. Perfect. Uh, and let's see, uh, we did have a question in regards to one of your key vertical markets. Uh, where, where's the best place to uh, target sales of these uh, panels? Very good question. We are noticing at the moment education and healthcare are really big. Um, education includes community colleges, school districts and universities. Um, school districts typically are very spread out and they've got multiple sites. Um, but there's a central either maintenance or operations facility. Um, they would like to put the keys for each site that stay at each site. Um, so rather than all these maintenance people driving between sites to do all of their different work, carrying the keys with them, which is a huge risk, um, keep the keys on site, have a cabinet on site. And so whoever needs to go there and do work, they grab the keys as needed and then put them back as needed. It's the same thing for universities, right? These are campuses with multiple buildings that are spread out over a big distance. Um, so to be able to put um, strategic cabinets around the campus so the keys stay where they are needed, um, that's a huge advantage. Yet they can be centrally controlled, right? So whether it's a security or facilities department, um, they tend to be short staffed, you know, they tend to be crying out for more resources. Um, they can control the entire campus with strategic cabinets without having to leave their desk. So they can get all of the reporting, all of the access control um, directly from their, from their desk. Um, so that's education. Healthcare is a, is a big one, multiple departments. Um, so security, facilities is really big. Facilities um, typically has someone who hands out the keys to all different vendors uh, and contractors that are coming into site. Um, just like the beginning of that video, um, this can waste almost all of their time. They have to stand in a particular spot waiting for a contractor to arrive. The contractor can, can, can be coming late. Um, if the contractor gets there and the key is not available, you're paying that contractor um, for work that they're unable to do. Um, so there's a huge amount of money to be saved by, by having these cabinets. Uh, that's education, healthcare, uh, and then commercial buildings. So we have just done a big rollout in Australia of 83 large commercial buildings. These are operated by um, CBRE and JLL, um, which is far, uh, I, I understand the so same companies um, out here as well. They put a bid out to, to all of the, the key management products in the market and they got sample products and did bench testing um, of all of the products of so similar competitors out here as well. Um, and on pretty much every criterion, um, we, we were the preferred option. So the technology, the security, the usability, the, the remote management capabilities, the integrations, um, you know, we were honestly so far, so far ahead on, on all of those criterion. So um, commercial buildings is, re is really a big one, um, particularly if it's a large building with multiple tenants. Of course, they've got contractors coming in, deliveries, um, all sorts of different vendors that need access to different things. Um, and cabinets like us allow keys to be handed out 24 hours a day without having to have someone sit at that security desk 20, 24 hours a day. Um, and in terms of commercial buildings, there are, there are 5.8 million medium to large commercial buildings in, in North America. So the market potential is, is absolutely huge. Um, even just for us to be able to get 1% of those 5.8 million buildings, that, that, that's almost 60,000 buildings. That's 60,000 cabinets ready to be sold. That's a good question. Thank you. Hey, hey Lucas. Yeah. Lucas, uh, if you don't mind if I can butt in real quick. Also, Please. another one is uh, fleet service vehicles. Oh, very good. Yes. Yeah, the fleet services and then with the new key fobs. Yep. So, um, yeah, Chris, uh, this is Chris. Uh, he, he's in the Chicago area on our team. 
Um, to tell us about the, the, the transport. So with the transport, what we've noticed with, uh, I have not seen, I've only seen one competitor with their older cabinet, older technology that can fit the new key fobs for the newer vehicles in their cabinet doors and actually have it shut without having to force it shut. That is one of the key benefits of our cabinets as well because the storage space is deep to hold more keys, to hold more uh, products. I mean, you can put your access cards in there as well, but the main gist of it is working with a few different police departments that I've worked with in Northern Indiana area. Their main problem, their main issue was with all their new fleet vehicles they had. For police vehicles with the key fobs, they would not fit in the older key cabinets from some of our competitors, mm -hmm. well, all of our competitors. So that was a, a key feature for us to get some of those really uh, those jobs as well. Yeah. So we can't really see it here. Uh, I don't think we can see it here either. But our key positions are offset. Um, so if you imagine hanging a set of keys from key position number one, it's got all of that room to hang before it would even touch the top of key position number 11. We have done this quite deliberately. Um, you know, all the products are going to look great when they leave the factory, right? They're all nicely polished. They're, they're, they're all nice and clean direct out of the factory. But then customers have to put their own keys in and it becomes a big old mess. We've really put a lot of consideration into that. So the depth between the key panel and the back of the door, um, there's a lot more in ours than anyone else on the market. So what Chris is talking about, the big, the big kind of plastic key fobs that a lot of the vehicles have now, um, even if they want to secure... Um, fuel cards to it or you know the remote control to the garage or anything if it's a really big key set um, our cabinet can uniquely handle that and the door can still close that's a good one okay uh, another question for you is there a buyback program if we upgrade to Taurus from secure it uh, I think uh, from secure it or competitors uh, solution as well uh, we don't have a buyback program that's kind of been formalized it really depends a lot on number of cabinets, um, what they're trying to achieve, how old their old cabinets are. Um, but case by case, I'll tell you, don't record this bit, our CEO at the moment, we're very excited about this new product and, and he's in a very flexible mood. Um, you know, we really want to get, get this out there and have people experience, you know, this next generation of, of key management. So case by case, bring, bring it to us. Let, let's have a conversation. Um, he's definitely willing to be really, really flexible and see if we can get creative and, and, and come up with something. Perfect. And then uh, in the event of an emergency lockdown for schools, can Taurus lock down all doors and building exterior doors or classroom doors from one location? Can we lock them? So we can lock down the cabinet from the software. Um, so I think the, uh, the issue here is that uh, uh, it would be to trigger an output to the lockdown system, uh, which whether it be an access control system or some other third party system, can Taurus trigger that from uh, their panel? Would be my guess. Okay, um, that, that's really interesting. So what you're asking is from the panel for it to be able to talk back to the access control system to get it to, to lock down um, exterior doors. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Uh, if okay. we can un unmute Re Russ, uh, maybe he can elaborate a little bit for us. We'll see. If not, we'll get back to you, Russ, and uh, we'll try to reach out to you and just uh, yeah. uh, uh, address your question directly. Yeah, if, if I'm understanding that correctly, it it's going to be dependent on the system because it, it needs to be our system talking back to the access control. So they need to probably allow us to be able to do that. Um, it's certainly the sort of stuff that we that we love to tackle. Um, so if you, yeah, give give us some more information. We'll we'll see if we can make it happen. Yeah, and I would say, Russ, in this case, um, most likely you probably don't want to lock down the panel because emergency responders are probably going to have some access to these keys. Um, and uh, so um, this would probably be, in this instance, probably one of those things that you would not want to secure. Um, hopefully the first responders will have an access control card or some sort of credential to reach the panel to gain access to the main main building keys would be my, my thought on this, but um, uh, certainly if uh, you have further questions, just let us know. We'll be happy to address those for you. Uh, I believe Lucas's uh, contact information will, will be available after this, this call. Uh, any, uh, there you go. Uh, are there any additional questions out there before we wrap this up? 
Well, it looks like you did a great job. No additional questions coming in. On behalf of Banner Solutions and Taurus, we'd like to thank you for attending this presentation. Please reach out to either Taurus or our team uh, at Banner Solutions, which is EAC at bannersolutions.com, and we'll be happy to address any questions or provide any additional details you need. Uh, thank you again for joining us. Thank you very much, everyone. And we have a team of channel managers around the country and USA-based service and support as well. Um, I thought it would be not the best idea to put everyone's contact details there. So there's our generic email address and number. Um, give us a call, get in touch with us, and we'll make sure to connect you with the right person in your area. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much.